the Minister of uh, Basic Education, Enji Motseha, has uh, said that they are ready to administer the matric exams that are starting tomorrow. A short while ago, she held a media briefing on her department's readiness and preparedness. Motseha says they've put security measures in place to curb exam paper leaks. Newsroom Africa's reporter, Mobile Madlala, is at the Basic Education Media Briefing in Pretoria, and she joins us live for more. Good afternoon to you, Mobile. I understand you're with the minister there for a quick interview. Well, definitely with the minister, but Audrey, it's important to say that this is crunch time for all these learners. Over 162 exam papers are going to be written, and over 700,000 learners are going to be sitting down for it. You can imagine and appreciate that this is a massive job. Perhaps, Minister, if you could just give us an update in terms of what is it that is going to go in place in making sure and ensuring that these students are administered accordingly. What has gone in place? Because we actually have done almost everything that had to be done in terms of preparing learners, making sure that we are comfortable that they've completed the curriculum. We've trained and employed uh, invigilators. We have screened our, 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 our examiners, uh, our markers who are going to start marking as soon as the papers start coming out and sort out all logistics about where we keep paper, when they leave, uh, wh when they are printed and how they are released in classes, just even train the whole chain system. So it's what has gone in place. Mm. And I mean, I imagine with that job also there's a job of ensuring that it is safe for every learner to write accordingly. We've seen in the past the leakages of papers. How are you ensuring that this doesn't happen again? You know, to be honest, we've last le had a leak. It's in 2020. 2020. 2020. That's the last time we had a leak mm. because we had worked very hard with our provinces to make sure that we can uh, protect the papers and the process. The last one in, in, in Bumalang, it was not so much of a leak because the paper would have arrived, a teacher removed it, quickly went to make copies, sent answers to learners. So it's paper which had already arrived, so which means it had not leaked throughout the chain system. So we had put also, we had worked very hard with provinces to protect also the processes from when the question papers are released when they are, when they are, because they are being set 18 months in advance, when they are, how they are stored, when they are released for printing and from printing, the whole process and who is in printing, because how they want, it was also about vetting the very people who work in the printing, uh, paper printing section. So it's to deal with all, all, also all those things, including vetting. Yeah, and whilst you talk about that, Minister, that's of course a concerning, especially for these learners, of course, because this has um, some repercussions after they have done such things where they cheat. Tell me a bit about those. What happens to them? It's very sad, actually. If they really find themselves caught up in that process, the consequences are very, are very dire. Ghastly uh, even to contemplate. It's just such, such a sad thing when they find themselves in that space. And I think if you saw in the last few weeks, all MECs were going out for the signing ceremonies to really speak to people, to say, don't even get to that place. Because what will happen, and it's, it's, I think we've eased now. When I came in as a it was three years. If you were found cheating and there's evidence for three years, you can't run a paper. I mean, can you imagine if it's a 19 year old for three years, you don't know, their life are in a limbo, and sometimes it just, that's the way it ends. So we've reduced it to three exams. But even then, it's such a sad thing for young people, because some of them, when we look at the other papers where they were not caught cheating, they could have passed even without the cheating thing. But there is no way you can be lenient because the stakes are very high. It's, it's the credibility of the certificate. As Dr. Podio is saying, even when you have a PhD, your matrix certificate is required so that the, the credibility of that paper has to be protected at all costs. So you can't allow any small things to, to affect the, 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 the value of that paper. And I mean, one of those issues that have been affecting learners at this point, and perhaps the whole South Africa at large, is load shedding. Um, perhaps how are you ensuring that these students are not affected, especially those that have to write things like CAT? It has been written successfully. So the provinces had to put contingency uh, plans in place. We work very close with the Department of of, 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 of Last time I used to work quite close with uh, uh, Mr. Pravin, even now, to really 
I led them to say during this period, there can be no load shedding and maybe postpone it to a later day. But with the CAT, it has happened without incidents where there were not load shedding, there were disruptions which are not part of load shedding. Uh, contingency plans, uh, <coughs> plans have, uh, have been put in place. For the other papers, again, we, where we think, as you say, where the lighting is poor, the provinces are ready with generators. But basically, we're very lucky as a sector. We work during the day. We rely on sunshine, and it works well for us. But in case we need lights, provinces have plans in place to make sure that there's no disruption. And I mean, we do understand that there's a first paper that's going to be written, which is going to be on Monday. Where can we expect the minister to be? Uh, we're going, because I'm traveling to, to Zambia, so I'm going to go through a special school on my way to the airport. Rosefield. Rosefield. It's a, it's a, it's, yeah, it's a school of children with special needs because I'll be traveling, so I'm going to go there tomorrow. Minister, what does this help with? when we have ministers and MECs that go on the ground and they minister or they see the first exam taking place, what does it help with in students or pupils? Personally, as a minister, I, because as I say, these exams create so much anxiety, even for us. So it really is very helpful for me to go on the first day and see that all the things we've put in place have penned up, penned out to be the way we've planned. So there's also, as I say, a personal thing that we really wanted to verify. DG will be going, all officials will be going, just to make sure that indeed what we say we've put in place has turned up like that. To learners, I hope it, it motivates them. It also shows them the seriousness of what they're going into and really uh, put them at ease. Unfortunately, we can't be anywhere. Those that I like, just to say to them, relax, but this is the most important period of your life. And finally, of course, those that have this crunch time ahead of them, I'm sure they'd like to hear a word or two from the minister. What would you say to the parents and the students or the pupils? For the learners, I really say they've put, I mean, 12 years uh, of a young person's life is more than half of their lives. So they've put so much into it. Most of them are 18, so uh, they've been here with us for 12 years. And I always appeal to them to say, let's make it. Worthwhile. It's been a long time, but it's really at the point where your life is opening for a better if you give it your all. And to parents to say, we've supported these kids for 12 years, we might as well as just support them for, the, for these exams and give them all the love, the support, and the protection that they need so that the girls are not the ones doing the laundry. The mothers must do their laundry this time. They must cook their meals. They must fetch their kids from the crash. And allow girls also to, 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 to allow them space to prepare themselves like they normally allow the boy child. So it's to the parents to say, please, please, please. We've been with them for 12 years. Let's get, let's, I mean, it's, it's, it's just a, a month's time for us to support them. Thank you very much. Minister Angie Mushekha, they speaking to us. I mean, it is quite an important time for those grade 12s that are going to be writing. So this becomes very important for them to be able to succeed and concentrate in what they'll have to do or do. Well, we certainly wish them all the best. And Mobile, thank you so much. And Mobile Madlana coming to us. They're having a quick interview with the Minister of uh, Basic Education.